presentation. Please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Thomas Cleveland. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you. I know we just ate and probably a bit um, ready to sleep. In the Caribbean region and in Latin America, we have something called the siesta. I don't know if you have that here in Samoa, because when you finish eat the kind of food that I just had there, scrumptious lunch, you go to sleep. And you are required to take two hours rest before going back to work. It's called a siesta. Let me just say thanks first and foremost for the invitation by the UNDP and the government of Samoa for inviting me here to be part of this important event. The, this um, entire session for the morning has been really, really great. And I am um, encouraged, totally encouraged. For those who don't know, again, my name is Cleveland Thomas, and I am the International Telecommunications Union representative for the Caribbean region. It simply means I'm the head of the Caribbean region. Long word, a lot of work, um, but it means simply I'm heading the entire region. Um, the, my, my understanding today is to share with you our Caribbean perspective and where we had been, where we are, where we are going. And for those who don't know, who are not familiar with the Caribbean, um, this is just to give you a snapshot of the region. You would see that map of the world there, North America, and the red area um, is indicate in the Caribbean region, we have something like 28 countries and a total of 43 million people in those 28 countries. The countries vary by size, it vary by number of people. The smallest country, Monsterat, has 5,000 people. Before the volcano, they were close to something like about 70,000 or so. But today it's 5,000 people. And we have as much as um, in another country, in, uh, particularly in Cuba, we have 11.3 million people. So quite a bit of variation. And with all of that, we like the Pacific, have a dependency on tourism. We um, depend on agriculture. We import a lot. Um, the beaches in the Caribbean, beautiful, if you have not been there. White, white, white sand, very expensive. Lots of, of um, cruise liners and shippers. I'm saying all of this because I want you to come over. Yes, you need to come over to the Caribbean region. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful place to be. The Bahamas has over 300 islands under the Bahamas as one country. Very beautiful place. Um, where I'm based is in Barbados. We have a population in Barbados of 300,000 people, or just about 300,000 people. We have aspirations like the Pacific Samoa and others of developing and moving with our progress using technology and so forth. And just two more minutes to give that background, and it has to, we speak to having some challenges. Um, one where we have had, as you would have read, the Irma hurricane, the Maria hurricane season. It has affected a number of countries to the point of negative GDP growth by close to seven or so percent. Um, the country, the, the region, uh, we, we find ourselves in a place where there's a high debt um, situation. 
um, as much as um, 110 or 20 percent in some countries, very high debt equity situation. At the same time, the region also has um, seen, as far as technology is concerned, the level of, of, of teledensity is quite high. Every person has at least two phones, um, one phone for one competitor and another phone for the other competitor, depending on their packages. So you get night of day, better package than the other, you use one or the other. The, the global outlook is improving um, overall, and there is an expectation of a 2% growth on average over the next year. Haiti, having just about 10 million people, is the only LDC in the region, the only least developed country in the region, and has... Um, uh, I mean, it's a really poor, poor situation in the country. The level of growth there is still probably just about 1%. So that gives a sense broadly of the, the region, where we are, what we are about, depending on the, the tourism, agriculture, uh, manufacturing, um, take a fairly good place in the region. Now, some of our challenges on the macro side, low growth, high debt, as I mentioned, and low commodity pricing. In terms of productivity, it's very difficult to do business in some countries. The system of operation in doing business can be quite difficult. And there's a large infrastructure gap um, and, and in terms of um, roads and, and healthcare and so forth improving. We have seen significant improvements. Um, we have found a lot of investors, particularly investors from China, um, finding themselves in the Caribbean, building stadiums and roads and connectivity um, there. Um, transportation quite high at the same time. One of the only Caribbean country that has gas and petroleum is Trinidad and Tobago. Um, that's the country I'm from. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, it's, it's a beautiful country. Um, very good for Calypso. If you want carnival and so forth, that's the place you come. And they invented the first country to invent the, the only instrument of the 21st century, and that is the National Steel Band. And Trinidad and Tobago is known for beautiful women. Pretty, pretty, pretty women. Number of Miss Universe and Miss World. So if you're looking for a wife and you are interested and single, it might be a place to travel to. Talk to me and I'll introduce you to one or two. So apart from that, um, in terms of human development, uh, youth employ unemployment is quite high. Uh, the education is very high, free education um, in the region, in the country. We have a problem with high crime. Um, it is a growing uh, problem in the region, and it has to do with the fact that the drug trade between um, the South America to North America, Europe, transit at times through the Caribbean region, and it's a major challenge we have been having. And then, of course, on the environmental side, we are looking at the issue of the um, hurricane. Our hurricane season started just, um, just a few days ago. And if we are to go by what happened last year, then you can imagine what's going to take us through. That being said, in terms of the technology area, um, we want to start by understanding from the ITU, as I said, my employers are the International Telecommunication Union. We are one of the UN agency. We are the first UN agency the oldest UN agency, we celebrated just over 151 years of our operations. And one of the things, our prime responsibility is that of specializing in ICT or technology. The fact that you have a country code, whether it's 246 or 868, all those who are coming in late, you have to come up here on the podium 
right now um we see three young ladies coming in late so you are required to come here on the podium not sit there we have three questions to ask you our fourth one is coming in as well you can come this way yes just a joke um so the itu we deal with spectrum we deal with issues of um development we deal with issue of cyber security internet everything dealing with technology from an, a multi um, or international basis standardization regulation policies um, we deal with all of that and one of the things that we have done is to measure the level of development of, of, of countries in the world and it is known as the IDI index or that um, ICT development index IDI and the three measures we look at is ICT access ICT use and ICT skills and, and, and it's broken down into those elements that you see there on your screen the percentage of household with internet um, household use subscription data mobile we also look in terms of use um, broadband subscription penetration to the internet fixed um, subscription and so forth we look at training um, these are, are, are really um, a good measure to see how far nations are in the world in their development the highest ranking countries in the americas region and um, the latest index as you can appreciate is for 2017 so we will be gathering information in 2018 shortly but the last ranking for 2017 in the americas region the united states was first um, but globally the united states is number 16. Um, regionally canada is second and barbados is third but in the world barbados is number 34. St. Kitts and Nevis is ranked as number four in the whole of the Americas with just about 30 countries, but ranked 37 in the world. And the reason why this is important is that even though Barbados is a small country with less than 300,000 people, it is ranked as number three in the whole of the Americas after large countries like the United States and Canada. How is that possible? and they rank number 34 in the world of 179 or so countries how is that possible in the caribbean region this is the ranking here barbados is number one st kitts is number two and you go through all the islands of the caribbean there that we have noted haiti is ranked the lowest as number 14 but if you go to the extreme right you would see it's ranked number 168 in the world um, again giving you a sense of measurement of um, skills technology use um, growth and everything else inside of there um, now the caribbean digital transformation approach we one of the things that i have had the fortune of doing is that I started as being a chartered accountant person, then I moved from London to, to Trinidad where I worked in the telecommunications firm for about um, 13 years uh, before I had the, the opportunity to work in and with government as Trinidad and Tobago National Chief Information Officer. And then we moved from there to a state enterprise um where being a state enterprise we were there to implement and execute um the plans to use technology for development and from there i moved on to going to do some private work to assist small island states developing states with the technology agenda one of the things and going forward with the countries we have on, uh, before going to the itu I've been with the IT for the last um, seven years, and we are based in Barbados. One of the things that I have observed in assisting the 14 plus countries is that there are commonalities. And where we are right now, um, there are a lot of similarities in when I heard Paul spoke and other people spoke earlier this morning, the steps that we have taken. 
Um, so some of the things may be repeated, but it shows the importance of it notwithstanding. The first item, the country needed to identify the importance of ICT for that country or for the region. If they do not recognize that it is important, you will not get the kind of buy-in as necessary. And two, the countries needed to establish the interconnectedness to the country's mission, vision, or strategy. So ICT means nothing for some people, but how could you make that simple and easy to understand? In the case of Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago has a vision to move to developed country status by 2030. And in Bahamas, they have a vision 2040. Barbados has a, a vision as well. So technology, how does technology plays into that big vision overall? So each one of the countries and many of them identify that big vision and the part that ICT will play inside of it as a first step. Then what they did was that they adopted a high consultative approach. They engage all the stakeholders, the NGOs, the private sector, government, the university, everybody got involved in identifying how technology could be used to achieve this big vision that the country has. They set up um, a, a, a force on steps of how do we take the stages forward um, in terms of gathering information, research, etc. And this just gives you there a small table of the collection of the information that they pursued. Did I do something wrong? Oh. All right. Next one. They identify phases. I heard different speakers mention it overall. They did not, with the Caribbean recognized, we can't go in and do everything. We don't have the resources to do everything. We are small. When I represented my government in the UN, I would sit with only one person in that room. But in front of me would be the United States reps with more than 20 or 30 people. Canada would have probably 15 people. Russia may have about 25 people. But for us in the Caribbean, it would be one or nobody. Sometimes you don't have a rep, you really have to represent others. So we have learned that we have to do things in phases. We cannot eat everything out one time. So we develop a national strategy or national policy. That's the first thing we did. Um, in most countries, what we identify is the need to get connectivity. Um, connectivity. Unless you have a platform for the infrastructure, how can we talk about services if you don't have something to put it on? So we went ahead and we developed, um, we focus on connectivity. Then the next stage we went into focusing on usage and uptake. Now that you have the platform, what are some of the services that you would want to carry and identify those services? And later in phase four, it is the whole issue of innovation, profitability, growth, and then going beyond that. So most of the Caribbean countries took it over phases. Many of us are in the phase three. One or two are in phase four. And I don't know that anybody is in phase five at this point in time in the Caribbean region. How long did it take us to move from phase one to phase three? It varies from country to country. But the other thing that has worked for us is that we learned that there is a need for an establishment of a national ICT implementation company or department or unit. We recognize that you cannot do it, you cannot leave the same government officers to go through and implement this because they are busy with so many other government things that you do have. And we recognize, too, that there are key ministries you must engage. Uh, most of the ministries in the, in the, to get involvement and engagement, we have found prime minister's office. In some countries, it might be the president, but it's the prime minister's office. Um, then the minister of finance. They control the money, so you need that. Then you need the minister of national security and education and perhaps ministry of tourism. But generally, there are at least 
five or six core ministries, you must get involved. If they are not involved, they can make it difficult for you or the progress of it. Um, key, now in knowing my time, I still have about seven minutes before we take some questions and following through. So let me move a bit quicker. Enable us. What will enable it? Um, again, you need, there are soft issues, there are some hard issues. The soft issues are as important as the hard issues. The policies. Is there a national policy to guide the direction of your vision? Is there legislation to help you do that? Um, we have found all these nice things about um, taking, we were talking about people who are speeding and breaking traffic light over the lunch with a couple of uh, my colleagues. And um, in as much as you put the technology there and you find somebody break the law, what law is there for you? you? What is the use having the technology if you cannot hold somebody accountable? So you need the law as well to support you. Then you need regulations. Your regulators, they are the watchdogs. And then a governance structure, um, a good governance structure, oversight that will work together. There's a need for a measurement unit. How well are you performing? What it is that you are doing good, what you are doing bad. And then there's also the need for telling your story regularly, promotion and awareness. The average person wants to know, hey, listen, I am going to get my passport application online. Just being able to get that form online. I was invited to one country some years ago. I will leave them nameless for now. And the government invited me there on early morning before 4 o'clock. We were outside to see the queue in the waiting at the um, passport office just to get a form to fill out for a passport. And the line was from here to probably close to a mile and a half to get a form just for that. Now, just being able to get access to that form online is considered a service and can save a lot of time. But getting the form is one thing. Filling the form and uploading it is another thing. And then being able to pay for that service and have an appointment, it's another thing. And all those things take time. And then we also have, and we have established commonly in the region, something called a business round table. A group of businessmen, the manufacturing association, the chambers, the agriculture, they are a group of people who meet regularly, help in furthering the direction of ICT. Our challenges, and I just have, I think, two more slides. Um, the challenges in taking the agenda forward is that many of the government in the region have ministers who have ICT split among them. So there's one minister responsible for telecom, another minister responsible for ICT, another minister responsible for ICT for security, another minister is, and that cannot work, it's not working at all. Where you have two or more ministers responsible for ICT, we have seen a lot of problems in the region. Guyana is the only country in the Caribbean that has gone and has one single ICT ministry where all responsibility is under that one minister because decisions are coming under that one person and not disjointed. We have found bullet point number two said changes in government from general elections do not guarantee continuity and plans. Every time there is a change in government, the new government scraps everything that you have started and have to start all over again. We might be the only one doing that in the Caribbean. I don't know that happened this part of the world. You all are blessed and highly favored. Yes? So that's a challenge. And then we also have the lack of data. The Central Stats Office doesn't have all of the information. Insufficient collaboration between the private sector and other non-government agencies. They don't talk with each other. I just saw I have two minutes, so I have to speed up. 
minimum technical capacity. Same person in government doing the same thing. The same person who is responsible for meeting with the, publica, the publish, publishers, he's responsible for meeting with the minister, he's responsible for meeting with media, he's responsible for international, he's responsible. He cannot handle the situation specific to the ICT. Trade unions, real problems. Trade unions not supporting the change. We have a situation where when we brought in and decided to move the um, driver's a permit online, bought in some consultant. Next thing you know, by the time the morning come, the entire system had copy in it. They destroyed the entire system. Started all over again. Threats to the, to the, to the people coming in. An inter-ministerial lack of cooperation. One ministry not talking to the other ministry, not talking to the other ministry, fighting against each other. I see people shaking their heads. So that means it's true. Yeah? And recommendation. I have a minute. Get the highest office support. Get your prime minister. Get your minister. Get somebody who is powerful. When they're involved, it happens. I heard Paul spoke about it. Leadership. Number one critical, most important thing. Leadership. Establish full-time implementation unit. Ensure resources are available. Biggest problem inside of the Caribbean, we don't have the funds the investors, the money to do the things. We have people, we have some skills, but we don't do it. Recommendations is that you go on a phased approach, collaborate, 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 deliver, deliver, deliver. And lastly, to advise that some of the projects we have that is very, very popular in the region, number one, one laptop per student. All over the Caribbean you hear one laptop per student program. Sometimes the laptops, you need support behind that, but they introduce a program because it's good to do, but it is having some challenges. We have also digitalization of records. That's a big thing that is happening throughout the region. E-payment, I'm still having some difficulties because of the laws. Paying for your services online. And two more, it is e-agriculture is now gaining some momentum in the region. And lastly, we have this whole thing about apps for emergency. Um, because of the weather situation, there's an app that is we are trying to get that would alert even the blind, the deaf, and others so that, you know, to move quickly because of an emergency. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my time is here now gone. So thank you for your attention. I am all ears.